Okay, so here's a video on uh, how to use flash print and uh, just a few tips for the um, Flash Forge Dreamer or Inventor uh, 3D printers. Um, so we're just looking at here um, that uh, I've got a, a rectangle here that uh, I've, I've printed. And the reason I do this, instead of leveling, leveling is a little bit uh, hit and miss. So, um, so what we do is we... Um, I've made up this rectangle that you can print um, pretty close to the border on on some of them they may be a bit misaligned so um, don't worry if it goes off the edge but it's really just to get the first layer um, and making sure that you can rub it with your fingernail and it doesn't come off okay so essentially I don't use the leveling option anymore in the flash forge uh, 3d printers I just I just know that this works rock solid every single time in that you can get it printing on every on the four edges of your platform um and and rub it with your fingernail and it won't come off and um and that that will give you pretty much 100 percent successful uh 3d prints when you're printing as long as you've got your model loaded correctly so let's have a look at how to load a model Okay, so uh, there's some particular things. First of all, going to the uh, print menu, we have machine type, and you would choose FlashForge Dreamer or Guider or Finder or whatever you have um, for your particular printer. Um, I'll just do it with the Dreamer 3D printer here, and we click on load. Now, uh, um, I'll go to my downloads and I'll choose a file and I'll click open. Now, if you'll we'll click yes for put on the platform. If your file comes in tiny, chances are you're using Inventor and um, you've saved that STL file either in inches or in centimeters. And um, and basically, it's just an option in Inventor that you can rescale. Uh, and and once you change it once, it will change for then onwards. Okay, so it's a simple little setting. Um, just on your next STL that you export from Inventor, export it in millimeters. Okay, very important, millimeters. And it will come in here the right size. Now, um, this is a, uh, a part of a rocket, and uh, we're going to rotate this. Now, if I use just the standard rotate like that, it might be a bit hit and miss. And let me show you um, what what I mean. If I, uh, if I move that and I go, oh, on platform, looks pretty good from here um, if I rotate and have a look at the bottom it's not blue and that means it's not touching it's printing on a slight angle like that and uh, in fact if if we did a print and we'll just uh, do this quickly just to um, to give you an idea but um, <laughs> So, uh, so here we can have a look at the layers. It looks like it's going to print. There's no warnings that have come up. We can go down and have a look. And, oh, look, it's printing a little square. And then it prints out at this angle. Ridiculous angle trying to get the rest of this object. This is um, priming the nozzle. It's doing the right thing. Because on the first layer, it's this tiny little square in the center. So, um, so that could be a problem if it's, if it, it's screwing up. Once you've done the leveling, put, um, the way I just showed you, um, that could be your problem. So there's a simple fix to this. Um, an another thing I'll point out first, though, is that when you're printing, if it's hollow like this and then goes across the top, it might work. It might sag. Okay, so it might be a problem. Um, far better if you've got a big hollow than far better than putting support material all in that. Um, you you would be better off with this one is uh, flipping it upside down. I would consider you'll use less material for your supports. Now, um, also uh, one thing that how I showed you to level it uh, just with that rectangle, it'll it'll stick without doing a raft. So I never print with the raft because we have the blue sticker mats. If it's level correctly, you don't need a raft. Um, the raft is only there uh, to fudge to fix the fudge of um, um, 
un, uh, improper leveling. Okay, so um, but how do we fix this that it's tilted? Let's have a look. We go to the rotate menu, and um, there's you know there's there's no point trying to change it uh, using these drag handles. But every time, like you can click these menus twice and they pop up open. Um, if as long as it's selected, if it's not selected, it'll say no model selected. Just select it. Um, we click on the surface to platform and we double click the surface and it snaps to it. I could print on that angled surface and look when I turn it you'll see the angled surface is blue and that's how we know it's printing on that surface. It's not a great surface to print on. Let's do this one. Okay so we've got it printing upside down. Now this would work fairly well except you can see that we've got this flat edge around the outside and we've got these little flats up here. Well, it's going to calculate that. If we're happy with the model and the orientation, and uh, it's closer to the front, doesn't really matter. This is the front edge, by the way, this blue strip. Uh, and I am rotating using a right click and drag. Okay, that's all I'm doing to rotate around that model. It's quite easy, right click and drag. Um, but uh, let's have a look at supports. If we want this to print successfully, we would have to put in supports and we want to check our options now this is this is um, a fairly rigid sort of a um, a shape engineered shape okay so we've got circles and flats and things like that so we wouldn't be using tree like um, it's really going to struggle with tree like to get a nice edge around that circle far better to use linear um, it gives us a few settings there I just leave it like that and um, then we can go auto supports and you'll see it puts in the supports like so and um, and so we've got the the model in dark blue and then we've got these supports now you could delete some of these if you wanted to but they should be fine printing like that um, one of the other options after doing that or when you're finished just click on back and that'll save the supports to the FPP. So remembering the FPP is the flash print file. Okay, so um, so all of the changes you make in this environment, if you wanted to print it again and just change one thing, like change the, um, you know, one stick of that support material, you would want to have that FPP file because if you've only got an STL, then you have to go through everything again. Or if you've only got the GX, then you can't change anything. So the FPP is like your working file. Once you've once you've got it in flash print, it's good to save it as an FPP file. And um, and that means I can oh look, I'll go and change one thing and go back and resave it. Okay, or after you've printed, you've got full access to that. Even if you close it down, just open it up and open up that part um, FPP file again okay so um so we're almost there uh let's go to our print menu and we'll have a look at a couple options here now we're printing in pla and one thing um flash the flash print software does is it changes the speed to something that's slower than the normal uh, slower than what it used to be okay so the new flash print software will change it to 60 and 80 I always change my PLA printing to 100 and 120 because that's originally how it worked and it worked perfectly well at 120. There's no problem with it printing that fast. Um, so, uh, so I always go back to that speed there and uh, temperature for PLA 200. Um, I normally go a little bit higher to 205 with the new filaments. Um, and uh, my platform always did on 65, but 50 seems to work perfectly fine. Um, one other setting you might want to choose is brim. Now, I'll show you brim. It's pretty handy. Um, let's save configuration, and then we'll click on OK, and we'll save the GX so we get the preview of how it's going to work. Yes, we'll over uh, save over that one. Now, it's not showing us the brim at the moment, but now it is. Can you see the bit? It's like the brim of a hat. Okay, so um, so if we have a look underneath there, the brim isn't actually uh, touching the support material. Okay, and it's not touching the base, but it's just going around the edge of the support material. And um, 
that's handy, especially if you've got lots of little things joining the mat. We don't actually need a brim here. That would print quite well without the brim. But uh, let's also just um, have a look at that. We'll go down the layers. You should always preview and just make sure that it's going to print correctly. You'll see down here, that's where our support material gets to there. And uh, so that's good. And we can go down further. And let's have a look at that change there where it goes there, the base. And goes. that's that little flat edge and it goes down further. And then we've got the, the base there. And so you can see on the base, it's going to join all of these edges to the of the support material to the brim. Um, and it's, it's only joining in little bits every so often onto the actual model. Okay, so that's our preview. Once you've got a preview, um, you might want to, uh, to weigh your rolls before you print, uh, depending on how much you have. But you can go to a weight est estimation now, choose PLA. And uh, it's going to say estimated weight, 61 grams thereabouts. Um, and so if you know what the stock uh, roll weight is, so the roll without the filament on it, if you've got a spare one, weigh that, um, I can't tell you at the moment, but um, then uh, you'd be able to weigh the roll that's got some filament on it and work out whether you've got 61 grams there or not. Okay. Uh, also, you might want to work out a cost and, and start charging uh, whoever's printing and go, well, it's it's going to be a dollar per, um, per what? Per 50 grams. Okay. So... <laughs> Uh, depending on, on uh, you know, you might have to replace these uh, printers after a while. So if you're running a, a maker space or uh, at a school or something like that, well, why not uh, get the, the customers or the clients or the students to, um, to start helping pay for the material they are using? So, um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, of course, you would just go send G-code. If you're connected, uh, I'm not connected, so it's not going to show me the machine. But that's how to get your 3D print ready to print on uh, any of the FlashForge printers, really. And um, I hope uh, you get success. Let me know if you do. And thanks for watching.